G'day and welcome to another edition of Sage of the Dusty Page. There's a little bit of dust on this uh, new book. Oh, it's not new, it's from 2015. From the game Frostgrave, Thor of the Lich Lord, written by Joseph A. McCulloch. Um, it's published by Osprey Games. It runs to about 66 pages. The artwork is by Dimitri Vermack. And um, let's get into it and have a look. So it's a supplement for the game Frostgrave. And as you can see here, the way it's laid out, it has basically a number of scenarios that can be either played independently or as a campaign. And they're scaled from one to 10. So you can, um, you know, if you've got a, an established wizard already you might go straight to the scenario 10 the final battle or if you've got a new wizard you, you'd start and just work your way through i won't go too much into the um different scenarios because i don't want to just to spoil them for everybody but um but have a look at some of that artwork there look at that it's just spectacular so just the first scenario they're all have a similar layout you get a bit of background set up special rules um, for that scenario and the detail and treasure and experience that you receive so and again there's there's 10 of them so that's hours and hours of um game time there's a ragnifier um one of the new creatures featured in the um, this book. Yeah, so they're the and there's the Ghoul King, another new creature featured in the book. I'll get to so. In addition to that, we pick up a number of new soldiers in the to add to the existing. Um, soldiers in the core rules so the first one is a bard there's nothing spectacular about him but the real gain with him or the bard is that you get a plus one on your will save or rolls when he's within six inches of line of sight so that's a bit of a bonus when you're um, for certain spells or creatures next one is a, a crow master now this this guy um, it costs a fair bit, 100 gold coins or crowns, but he brings with him a blood crow, which again is a new creature featured in this book. The blood crow um, can attack and fight independently. So what you do is you can actually artificially increase your number of soldiers by above 10, though one of them is a bird companion. Next one is a javelin ear. Um, basically, it's just a low cost um, way to achieve missile weapon or ranged attacks. So he, th he throws javelins um, to the distance of 10 inches on the board. Um, but the javelin is subject to all the same um, restrictions with, and penalties as bow and crossbow attacks. And he's assumed to have sufficient javelins in his, at the start of the game to, to play through the scenario. The next one is a pack mule. Uh, and this, whilst he doesn't have a lot of fighting capability, what he can do is actually carry three extra items. So in most Frostgrave scenarios, a standard soldier can only carry one additional item, where this guy can carry three. So he might be able to carry a healing potion and then carry a couple of treasure tokens. Um, so you get a couple of new spells as well. Um, one from the Witch School, casting um, cost or target number of 14. I'll try to say this, Homunculus, which basically allows you to create a... Um, lost for words. A vessel that keeps some of your essence. So if your wizard dies in the battle... Um, instead of, and he dies completely 
out of game when he or fails the um, after battle rolls, you can go back to how that wizard was in the first first round of the last game. So there's a cost to that day, and that is you lose two levels and permanently lose two um, health points off your health stat. But otherwise, you're free to participate in the next game. So you can keep going at a um, in a campaign with your wizard. Next one is Lynchdom. Just the game. It's cast out a game. Target number twenty. This is a tough spell to cast. Um, if you fail, there is a significant number of penalties for you. But if you're successful, the new lich it, it gains quite a range of benefits, um, and you can play it as a, a, a wizard. Um, but you get instead of costing a hundred experience points per level, it's now one hundred and fifty. Um, yeah, so not a bad one. And the next one's um, another necromancer spell with casting number fourteen is a revenant. Revenant, and um, it basically allows you to uh, the necromancer to uh, counter and create a superior undead. So it's a pretty cool spell to make a, a tough undead opponent. We move on to the new treasures. So you you get up to well the seventeen um, treasures, and then there's three grimoires for those basically those new spells that you can roll um, as you recover treasure and you can and you can buy them in the in the marketplace if you've got sufficient gold back out of game but it's a couple I really like the boots are leaping um, I think it's really good that uh, allows you to move quickly and uh, travel height without having to use the leap spell um, where was it? The Vampire Blade. Whilst it it does not um, uh, give you any attack bonus, what it does is basically allows you to regain two hit points of lost health from any successful attack. So that's a pretty handy thing to have. Uh, the other one was the Quiver of the Soul Seeker. Now this. This item, basically any arrows or bolts that you put into it, and enable you to be able to attack um, ethereal creatures undead. So, again, a pretty handy thing to find. And then you get a new beastry, beastery um, encounter table. Um, these are the death cultists. Um, which, you know, this is... Some of the guys I've, I've put a previous video on about. So there, that's how I painted mine. But I, again, I just I think the artwork is is so good in these books. So yeah, there's seven undead featured, um, one human, which is the death cultists, one animal, which is your blood crow, and then you get a hybrid. So the ragnifier, which is a a cross between a human and a reindeer. Um, you can have them into your war in your war band. And you can employ them. They they actually have a real hate for undead. Um, one of the scenarios, what I should say is, all those as you play through the scenarios, they introduce these new creatures. So yeah, um, a wrath knight. I haven't got this miniature, but I. We'll try to get hold of some in the new year. I think they're it's pretty cool, and I just love the artwork again. Probably the we get to the end. The AI, all the mechanics surrounding the lich, I think are really good. Um, you know, depending on the character's actions, the lich will do certain things. Which, if you wanted to play this solo, is is really handy. Um, but this Lich, it's a tough opponent with a health of 25, like, um, and an armor of 14. That's, that's pretty tough. And you've got really good fight, shoot, and will stats as well. 
So, and then there they are advertising the next um, supplement, which was into the breeding pits. So, what do I think of this? I think once you've exhausted your um, scenarios in the main game book, the rule book, um, this is a really good first first purchase for you to play in the game, just to to add to your game, um, expand the number of creatures you get to fight. Um, yeah. So anyway, lastly, look, I'd like to thank everyone that has subscribed. I, I'm really quite surprised. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Have a great day. Cheers.